All right, guys, welcome back to another video. This is Taishan, Mount Tai, the most sacred of all of China's sacred mountains. This is the top of the mountain. Let's start right at the bottom. Your journey begins at the Dai Temple, a huge Taoist complex and one of only a handful built to the same standards as an imperial palace. There are records of 72 emperors coming to Mount Tai, and those emperors came here to perform the first part of the Feng Shan ritual, the second part at the mountain summit. This sacrifice to heaven and earth was the most important an emperor had to undertake as it solidified the emperor's power over the empire. The temple grounds are full of stone stele and ancient trees, some said to be planted by emperors themselves. A fascinating place, but now it's time to climb. <laughs> Okay, so this is the trailhead for the central route. It's called the Red Gate. Plenty of shops and things to stock up on water if you want. That's the Red Gate. Pretty apt name, I guess. So no drones on this mountain. I just found out the hard way. When I went to Huashan and Hongshan, I didn't actually take my drone, but people were using them there. I felt a bit envious. So I thought I'd bring it for this one. <laughs> and uh, they scan your bags and said no. So I just store it in a locker and we'll have to come back and pick it up later. Cypress cave. It's saving the membrane. The Great Eastern Mountain lies in Shandong province and due to its lengthy history is covered in temples. Many walkers bypass these on their journey, but some are worth a look. The temples are dedicated to the numerous Taoist deities associated with the mountain, such as Zhongyue Dadi, the emperor of the East Peak, and Bi Xia, a Taoist goddess associated with the dawn. It's suddenly got a lot tougher. We're just approaching about the halfway section. It's so humid. Very, very different from uh, the dry heat of Hongshan in uh, the last stretch to the Midway Gate is busy, noisy and tiring. A lot of people looked close to giving up here and taking the cable car. Fear not though, I shall continue on. These lads have been seeing better days. This is Zhong Tianmen. That's halfway, about halfway to the top of the mountain. Halfway to heaven is what it means. Let's go. So it's from this midpoint that you can take the cable car all the way to the, uh, to the top of the mountain. You can just see the terminus up there. And there's a bus actually also that goes from here all the way down to the bottom of the mountain. So you could actually get to the top of this mountain without stepping a single foot on it until you get to the top, obviously. Also, I'm not sure if you can make it out there, but the, uh, there's a path up there. It's called the 18 Bends. That's the really tough part of the climb right before the summit. Looking forward to it. Mount Tai is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and another of its treasures are the thousands of rock inscriptions, basically everywhere you look. Some of these are truly ancient and on a gigantic scale. Not very easy for me to understand, however. All right, had a drink, got my breath back. Time to get to the top. The guy at the halfway point, some fella, told me, uh, I did it in an hour and a half. I set up at like 7.30 a.m. and I got there at about nine. He said it was fast and that I was very, very high. I don't know if it was that fast, but um, I'm doing all right. Basically smashing it. I want to show you what's in front of me. What do you get halfway from Sacred Mountain in China? It's a KFC. Oh my God, how can something be so wrong yet so right? I had a iced latte, just like the emperors of old. If you think back to my previous video of the great northern mountain of Hongshan, there were about 10 people there, I think. Why is it so busy here? Because historically, culturally, this is the most important mountain anywhere in China. Actually, pretty good vibes. Everyone's happy, having a good time. Feels good, actually. It's quite nice to be surrounded by people sometimes. <laughs> It's got more of a pilgrimage kind of feel to it, this. I quite like it. I feel like I'm going to achieve something. Immortality, maybe. Or just 
really tired legs. So there are somewhere between six and a half and seven and a half thousand steps to the peak of the mountain. Um, I'm taking like two at a time, so like 3,000. <laughs> We're just coming up to the quite famous part of the walk. It's called the 18 Bends. If you search for Taishan online, probably the first photo you'll see is a really steep staircase up to a gate at the top of the mountain. Uh, that's where we're heading right now. Looks really, really steep and very exposed to the sun. I did sun cream up, but I burn very easily. <laughs> oh, it still looks like a long way to go. So the 18 bends is 800 meters long and it gains 400 meters in altitude, which makes it steep. Well, one problem when you get a place as busy as this, it is covered in crap. Why do people do that? It makes me so sad. That was brutal. That was 1,600 steps. That uh, that very long, steep, sunny stretch. Must find a cold drink. where the big kind of TV tower thing is. That is the summit apparently. Very close. Let's finish this sucker. Uh, smashing out the uh, music here. <laughs> oh, feels good. Got a bit of breeze now. I was melting on those steps. Goodness me. I've had a couple more bottles of water. Sorted me out a bit. So there's like a town on top of this mountain. There's uh, a few hotels, loads of restaurants, shops. Very different from uh, the previous two mountains I've climbed. I was going to stay on, I was thinking about staying on, uh, on the top for the night in a hotel, but when you're traveling by yourself and the rooms are, the rooms are kind of prohibitively expensive. So I, um, I opted out. The room rates doesn't really tell you how much it is for a human. This has been a site of pilgrimage for uh, people in China for over 3,000 years since the Shang Dynasty. Still going strong, the old uh, pilgrimage and tourist industry it seems. It's pretty nice. I quite like this. You know, when you get to the top of the mountain, everyone looks so happy. Going up those steps at the end, people are crawling. People are crawling up the steps, including me. And you get to the top and there's just this, I don't know, is it relief? Achievement? Maybe. Views are amazing. So nice up here. Around the summit area there are a few sites worth having a look at. Right in front of me this is the Temple to Confucius. So these five mountains are considered Taoist mountains but the majority of them do have Buddhist and Confucian temples as well. Stairway to heaven for you Led Zeppelin fans. That's me by the way. Big Confucian presence here in uh, Shandong. It was um, his hometown, Shufu. It was uh, only about 70 kilometers away from here. Thinking about going. Should I go or should I save it for another trip? I've got to get two more mountains in before I um, take my holiday back to the UK. <laughs> Time is of the essence, unfortunately. It's such an important place for Chinese people and their culture and history. I think it's, it is quite cool. It's one of those things I think it, you've got to do it in your lifetime, you know? Like going to the Great Wall, that level. It's worth it. I think, it, again, it's all of these mountains. I mean, I think they all offer something very, very different. So there are a number of deities associated with this mountain. We're just coming to a temple now, which is a temple to Bixia, who is a Taoist goddess, the goddess of childbirth, fertility, and the dawn. Apparently women still come here today 
you know, who are trying to conceive. It's still a very spiritual place, China. I know people think it isn't, but it is. Bixia, or the Lady of Mount Tai, has a strong connection to the mountain, and there are several temples dedicated to her. This is the Palace of Azure Clouds, near the summit of Mount Tai. I couldn't film inside, but it was perhaps the busiest temple building I've ever been in anywhere in China. Quite unbelievable. So that is the Jade Emperor Peak, the highest point on Taishan. It's 1,545 meters above sea level, and the Jade Emperor Temple is on the top. So this is in the Temple to the Jade Emperor, top of the mountain. Sure, sure. Just an endless cacophony of loudspeaker bullshit up here, seriously. So, so the story goes, Confucius himself came to this exact spot to observe the kingdom. Wow, what a view. So here on top of Taishan is where we'll finish this video. It's been hot and sweaty, looking forward to a shower and maybe another cold coffee. <laughs> um, interesting experience. Not the same level of peace as Hengshan or it's not as good a hike, I don't think, as Huashan either, but it is something. And obviously for, for Chinese people, very clearly still an incredibly important thing that I think most people feel like they have to do in their lifetime. On to the next one. The next one is one I'm looking forward to, which is Songshan, the great central mountain, famous all over the world for a Buddhist temple on it. That is the Shaolin Temple, which I'll be visiting as well. All the best, guys. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.